stump the chumps <laughs> on this 21st day of April 2022. And it's been quite a while since we've matched up. COVID-19 set us back, set us all back. And I sort of stepped aside for a while. And uh, so here we are with the re refurbishing of, of the Stump the Chump program. And uh, my name is Bill Keel, and I've been around a long, long time. But these guys have been around a long time, not as long as me, but this is Al Sharon, and this is Roser Lange. So Al, give us your Burlington pedigree. My pedigree? Your pedigree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Burlington. I worked for the state for about 40 years. And uh, I've enjoyed uh, every moment I've had in Burlington. And I'm glad that we're going to be talking about Burlington Parks, close to my heart. Okay. Roser, I've been around Burlington government a long time. And I think you're the one who worked for the, so many different departments while, during your service to the city. Is that true? Well, a couple, three of them or so. Uh, the, uh, in 1959, I went in as a full-time uh, fireman in Burlington for 10 years. And um, at, the, at that time, 10 years later, I, uh, I partnered up with someone and uh, started Queen City Fire Equipment, selling fire equipment all over uh, the northern half of Vermont, including fire stations. And uh, then, uh, uh, then I sold out my, my half and uh, went to the legislature for a couple years until the Mayor Paquette asked me to come to work for the city, uh, which was as assistant city clerk for about two and a half years. Then he asked me to go down to the uh, assessor's office, uh, where after a couple of years, I was city assessor until 1990. Um, uh, prior to going to work for the city, I actually was on two commissions in Burlington, uh, what was called at that time the uh, street commission. They, they were all separate. Uh, and also the uh, Sewage Disposal Commission. <laughs> wow. Um, and uh, was chairman of each of them for a year or two. Um, and that's, uh, that's, a, that's when I, that's when I went, I had to leave that too when I went to work for the city. But then uh, after I left the city, I always, uh, for, I don't know, 15 years or more, was a, a, uh, an inspector of election out in Ward 4. So I've been around the city uh, doing different things for a number of years. Wow. Okay. Viewers, if you have a question to stump these chumps and you want to call in, call 802-862-3966. You might have a question for us or you might have to share an incident because we're going to talk about the, as Al said, talk about the Burlington Parks and, and, and Recreation System and I even brought my I even brought my hat. Uh, I had lunch yesterday with Cindy White, who was the current uh, uh, director of parks, recreation, waterfront, and anything else that floats. So, uh, if, if you have a, a incident you want to share with us, give us a call. Again, we're going to talk about Burlington recreation areas, our parks, our beach, our bike path. So, Rosaire. What was growing up in Burlington or being in Burlington? What's your favorite park, and what you what 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 did you do in that park? Your favorite thing? Well, in the um, early to mid '50s or so, uh, I I grew up in the old North End, and uh, almost every night in the winter we were at Roosevelt Park, where they had a a good sized warming hut with a pot belly stove, um, and uh, uh, ice skated there every night and. Uh, uh, about nine o'clock after the young kids left, they they would put on music and you could actually skate with the girls. And back then, it was like a rhythm type of skating that you did, almost like a dance. And that was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, when it was time to close up, uh, there was two or three of us that skated pretty well. We would help the uh, maintenance guy to uh, use the shovels and clear the ice off of all the snow and stuff so that he could put out the hoses and freeze it. Uh, that's kind of what they did. Uh, down at the south end, what was South Park back then started from Flynn Avenue, I mean uh, Pine Street, all the way up 
to what you know as Callahan Park now. Right. That upper part was all part of South Park, and up in that upper part is where they had a warming hut and ice skating, just like Roosevelt during that time. Uh, years later, it became uh, Little League, and as you know, it does today. Um, down below was the uh, the baseball field where a lot of softball leagues played. There was a big, big grandstand there that got taken down uh, several years ago. Um, but those were the two primary parks in the city outside of uh, North Beach in the summertime for for uh, going out there for swimming. So, uh, Al. Well, I uh, I like South Park. Uh, I played football, baseball down there. Uh, the high schools played down there. Uh, I also like Smalley Park because I hit a grand <laughs> slam home run off from Julie Melanson's house, <laughs> which was down the left field line. And uh, so that's always been dear to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I'll, I'll, and uh, Battery Park, I've always liked because of the sunsets there. Yeah. Rudyard Kipling said, "If you want to enjoy a sunset, go to Battery Par Park in Burlington." And he and he's right. And my wife, I, uh, my wife Anne, and I go frequently to see sunsets. Uh, at Battery Park. To this day? To this day. Well, as I said, I had uh, lunch with Cindy White, and this one of my causes is to open Battery Park again to the public, but that's not very popular. But uh, right now, there's no, no way to get to Battery Park. You have to park it. The closest parking that's, that's is in right. the parking garage. So I go by Overlake Park once in a while in South Burlington, and there's more people looking at the lake from Overlake Park in South Burlington as more than Burlington. You get only yeah. people within... Well, you're way up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... Now, um, uh, well, the nice part about Battery Park was uh, when when I, when I we were in our young age, there was a lot of kids that spent a lot of days in the summer there, and um, the, the cannons were always popular to jump up and sit on the cannons as if you were riding a horse. Uh, uh, walk the stone wall that was around there. It had a lot of activities, which now you don't see any activity because nobody can park there. And it got spoiled because a few uh, uh, people with, young people with cars would park there. And uh, there was things that uh, the police didn't appreciate going on uh, with in those cars. And right. the solution was to sh shut down the park in there and keep people out instead of making good use of something that was a great asset to the city. And let me just follow up. You mentioned uh, Smalley Park, and for the audience that might not know where Smalley Park is, it's, uh, it's, it, it goes a lot, it's on the corner of uh, St. Paul, Paul Street going up Adams Street. It's not real big, but that's where the Burlington High School, when Burlington High School was uh, down on Main and uh, South Union Street, the baseball team every day would go down there, yeah. and that's where they did all their practicing. Some of the softball teams' leagues would play there too, um, uh, but that that park had a lot of use. But it was very rough. If you went, if you were doing baseball there or softball, and you slid, uh, chances are you might be going against some rough stones and something right. else. I, I remember, I remember uh, being a catcher there for softball one night and. A guy uh, rounded third and was heading home, and he wasn't going to get across. So I stood in front, holding that ball, and man, <laughs> he nailed me like a bulldozer. And I went skidding in all that rough terrain. So I remember it real well. Well, I went also, you could hit a home run in center field, couldn't you? What was the name of that street that came down? From Elm Terrace. Elm yeah. Terrace. I saw a guy. We were playing uh, uh, a game. Uh, with the uh, UVM freshman. And Jack LeMabe, who later pitched for the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, he was on the freshman team. And he hit a ball. He was playing first base that day for the freshman. And he hit a ball up there on Elm Terrace. Wow. And uh, I, I'll never forget, you know, him hitting that ball up there. 
I never saw anything like that before. I mean, that's about 400 feet. Yeah, wow. You know, it's 400 I was feet. Playing, I was playing with the Mud Alley Midgets uh, in Smalley Park. You remember the Mud Alley Midgets? Yes, Maybe you I folks do. remember the Mud Alley Midgets. In Explain where Mud Alley is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mud Alley is Marble Avenue, Hayward Street, down sort of the halfway south end. But anyway, I was playing for Lenny Lafayette, and I was being a smarty. Somebody hit me a fly ball, and I said, oh, I'll try and catch it behind my back. You know, <laughs> like this, the ball is coming and bent over like that. I missed it. <laughs> I didn't bother to go back to the dugout because I knew I wouldn't, didn't have a long life for the rest of that game. <laughs> but getting back to the to ice skating thing, that that's really was a very popular uh, sport. Uh, and um, was. Uh, they did a lot at South Park. And when they put the lights on, that was a big deal. And it helps. Uh, and uh, I was park superintendent about that time when a lot of that was going on. And as soon as I got that job as park superintendent, it, I found out that the employees, there was, there was a, an alderman in, in Burlington at that time who sold soda, and he had glass containers. And what he, the deal was made with the city that whatever this, this soda, whatever they sell, it was profit to the person who worked there. They didn't get paid for it, but they, got, they sold soda and candy with the profits going in that. Well... I stopped that big time, but yeah. so anyway, that it, wasn't it, Champlain beverage, was it? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> we know who the element is that you're talking about. So, but also I had another run in with that person as well because uh, we'll get to North Beach in a while, but um, you don't want glass at North Beach. Oh my God, no! And uh, that's the last thing you, you want. want. Your city alderman uh, selling a, a container that has glass. He's not very supportive of banning glass, but that was an issue that some of the pressures sometimes that these city officials or state officials have pressures for people with special interests. We know that all the time. But anyway, that was my experience with the glass containers, and of course, we don't uh, do that today well, I, anymore, but I, we did it that day. I can verify what happens, because uh, we were frolicking down at North Beach one time uh, with a ball, and somebody threw the ball out, and it went out over the water some. So I run out, and I kind of did one of these flying things for it, about six, seven, eight feet out into the water. And when I landed on that one foot, I caught a piece of glass and on the bottom of my foot, and it was at the hospital that they had to clean it out. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So right, that, is, about, that is dangerous. How about the New North End? New North End uh, has, has two parks now, and one... The Schifoletti Park. Charles. We have Schifoletti Park, and we have a park. What's the other one? Uh, there's a park uh, down by uh, where uh, I live. Apple Tree Point? Yeah, by Apple Tree Point. Uh, and it's been dedicated uh, to uh, David Grakowski. Oh, it who, has. Who, oh, uh, yeah, and has basketball uh, court and uh, also a play play area. And uh, it was dedicated to him because he lived close by, and he used to go over there on his own and mow the, the, the grass uh, at the park. Oh. So uh, it, it was a great thing, you know, when they dedicated that to him. But you can go down there and, uh, and watch these kids play basketball at, and, at, this, park. at this park. Okay. Yeah. And and so that's a great park. Of course, Schifoletti Park. Charlie had been a you know a g great uh, well, organizer for Little League. Yeah, and and I was there when Charlie and Bill Peacock and Bob Rosenberg and some yeah. of those people. All they had was two dugouts. That's, that's how they started. That was all volunteer right. work. And, and the city didn't give them any any money or any support. Now today. There's what two, three good, nice ballparks out there. Right. Really nice ballparks. There's three major ones. I, the third one, the, the, when you were talking about, there were two, and then when they, I was involved as a vice president of the little league at the time when we built the third one, um, and we did all the work ourselves. Uh, yep, all yeah. volunteers. All volunteers. Yeah. yeah. And that made it very successful. That'd yeah. be umpiring baseball games though. You, <laughs> the the fans are real close to the players uh -huh. and one of the big issues was you're behind the plate calling balls and strikes 
and the parents would be griping both the me, the umpire, and they tell the kids, oh, stand closer to the play, get your feet together, put, put your, all that advice that a poor kid <laughs> playing baseball, he was harassed by that Eight, kind of nine, stuff. ten years old. I <laughs> yeah. Listen to all of that. And I, so now I think they put the fans out in center field. Or so. Right. And, uh, well, they got a couple of uh, real nice stands out there now. They, the new co aluminum kind that meet the safety standards and everything else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now how about one of our lesser known parts called Shemanska? Uh, Shemansky? Viewers, if you get some input here, give us a call, 802-862-3966. Now, Sharon knows a lot about Burlington, as does Rosaire Lounge. They've been around. Give sure. us a call, 802-862-3966. Well, Shemanska Park. Shemanska Park. Shemanska Park uh, was named. That's where it is. It's uh, uh, down by um, Gross. where Kirby Sandpit used to be, down around uh, Chase, Chase Street and uh, that area. And uh, Ireland has built some uh, big, uh, 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 quite a development in that area. Almost the same. And so uh, Shemanska was owned by, uh, the land was owned by Shemanska and then was uh, donated uh, to the city. And uh, it's about 123 square acres. It connects to Centennial, Centennial Field. Uh, and uh, Wait a minute. The, it, the it, cemetery, it, you got a cemetery up there. Uh, Green I Mountain Cemetery? I don't know if there's a cemetery there. Yeah, there is. Well, there Green is. Mountain is up, up the hill from it, there. Up the hill. Oh, yeah, going towards a yeah. Centennial yeah. Field. Uh, anyway, they used to have softball games there. So just say if you're playing at Schmeska Park, right field is, is a steep hill. Right. So I don't know <laughs> how you play softball and playing right field when it's on a slope. They didn't play there very long, but softball was a big thing in Burlington. We had the Continental League and uh, a couple of leagues that you were talking about, Rosaire. Yeah, the Continental, uh, if I remember right, they they were the uh, the younger crowd, you know, uh, probably shortly after, after getting out of high school and up to... Well, they could go to any age, but most of them were like in their 20s and early 30s, and it, it was serious ball that they played. Uh, the, the league I, I played in a couple years was, I think there was a minimum age of either 30 or 35. Um, it wasn't as serious and certainly not as fast, uh, but we, the, it, we played at South Park, uh, at Letty Park. Um, Sometimes at uh, Smalley, uh, but the softball was pretty big back in oh the sixties and seventies, yep. uh, quite big. Yep. And and the fifties when they had fast pitch. Yep, slow pitch and fast pitch. And, and you had uh, you had Deshanes and you had McGregor's, and uh, yet you, you know you had a number of different uh, teams, and. Uh, they would go out of state and play, uh, and they could, you know, fast pitch. It was really oh, fast pitch. It, it really is. And, yeah. And and, and it, people think of it kind of as a public park, but uh, Centennial Field is really belongs to UVM, but a lot of other things going on there. And and if you want to talk about baseball, way back in the '40s, you had the Burlington Cardinals, which was a professional <laughs> team that played there, and and players from that. Uh, uh, were associated with the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, so there was a lot of good baseball. But remember, when we're talking about those times, even in the early to mid-50s when I was talking about going out skating every night, right. it wasn't every household that had a TV. It was minimal. Oh, no. It was minimal because TVs were kind of expensive and uh, you might you were only getting like three channels. So you weren't sitting home watching TV every night. So you went out and did things. And, watching TV. Uh, and especially, the... uh, especially on Saturdays, you were always out doing something. Uh, watching was... TV through the snow. Yeah. Now, uh, I remember some you, 
some of the skates you had a certain three kinds of skates. There was ice hockey skates. There was regular skates. Racers. You had racers. Ra yeah. Ra What's wrong with the with the ridges on it and the toes? That, Those that, are oh figure skates. Figure, figure skate. skates. Yeah. yeah. I view, I always use the racer skates. Yeah. Oh, you were the smarty with the long blades, huh? Yeah. Well, at Roosevelt Park, uh, there was always a big crowd there, but there was a uh, two of us that were probably the uh, they considered probably the the better skaters and one uh, you remember uh, police chief Art Karen sure well he had a set of twin boys and one of them boys was the other guy that uh, skated with racers with me and uh, we'd break up uh, after all the young kids were gone we'd break up and, and make two groups and play what was called dungeon uh, which <laughs> you, you you tag somebody and they had to go into this little ice area that we set up, and if uh, somebody else could come through there and tag them, they'd be free. That that was <laughs> kind of simple entertainment yeah. that we had back then. There was no hockey played. No. Uh, yeah. Hockey was played down in Lakeside with uh, Lefty Joyle and, and uh, you know. Claude Armstrong. Claude Armstrong and, and, the, and the, you know, those guys down there who actually found uh, founded the uh, kids hockey in in Burlington, yeah. but uh, yeah, and, and you're right. You, you raced over at uh, oh. over at Roosevelt Park. And when you want to talk about old parks at at Lakeside, that's one of the old parks. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, when when in those days they, they we were talking about the the fire wood and. And you, you out, no matter what the temperature was, the wind, you went out and skated. Oh, yeah. And you came in and you warmed, warmed up. up again. It was sometimes really hot. And you put your, take off your shoes and put your shoes underneath the bench. And you <laughs> make sure you, that after you get through uh, skating, that your shoes are still there. And of course, after everybody left, right. some kids forgot their shoes. I don't know what they, <laughs> how they went home, but <laughs> that, was, that was the situation. But uh, of course, they used to flood that whole area. You know, they'd get out there with their hoses, yeah. and uh, that was quite an area there at Roosevelt Park. Oh yeah, it was it was a big ring. Yeah. It was a big ring. And the same thing in South Park, pretty much. And, and Chamaska had uh, a rink out a while. Now, do you, do you ever hear of Champlain Street Park? Well, yeah, well that that came about from some buildings that got torn down back in. Where'd that Bend. come from? I don't remember how that how the city got a hold of that. Uh, I'd say it was uh, Champlain. Uh, viewers, Champlain Street Park is uh, at the end of the south end of Champlain Street, right yeah. near uh, Maple. Is well, it Maple but, or King? I think it's between King and Maple. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there, there was a building there, and I might have been as late back as the '70s or probably the early '80s when uh, something got torn down and never got built up and turned the neighborhood kind of turned it into a park and then the city kind of took it over. I, I won't swear to that, but I think it's about what happened. Yeah. Well, it, when I was at the, on the, in the park department, we was in the 60s, that, that was one of my parks. It was one then? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. It's not very big. So it goes back further than I think. Well, they're doing a renovation of it right now. Oh, they are? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good, because that's not, there's a few kids around there, but, but not that many. But... Uh, Let's see what, what's what's another part? Letty Park, you know. Well, uh, Letty Letty <laughs> Park was named after Bernard Letty, who was on the Parks Commission. He was a long, long time, time member of the Burlington Parks Commission. Correct. And uh, he had lived on Stanford Road in the '40s, and he would walk in those woods over over to the Burlington uh, rendering plant, <laughs> and he. Uh, wanted to see a park there at some time. And uh, so soon after his death in 1972, the Park Commission named Karenko Park uh, in his honor. Uh, and the park was finally dedicated uh, July 4th, 1976. Oh. Uh, and uh, that was the bicentennial year, oh. and that's when it was uh, dedicated to uh, uh, to, uh, to Bernard Letty, and it turned out to be a great park. Oh. Uh, it was a great area, you know. That area, when Karenko was there, 
you could sm <laughs> you could smell it <laughs> on North Avenue from the and, rendering and, plant. Well, yeah, and then they had all those woods to to, to mask it, you know, and to cut it off. Let me uh, just explain what a rendering plant was. Oh, yeah. Karenko was a company. Rendering plant was where they processed uh, uh, animal caucuses. Uh, and the other thing they did, they had trucks that went around to all the stores. Store, store to store. Up, like the stores would throw all their uh, uh, beef trimmings and bones and stuff because back then it didn't come all prepared. Right. You broke it all down and boned it out and put it in barrels. And once once or twice a week, the big uh, rendering company truck would come by and pick them up. So at that plant is where that all got boiled down. And what they'd end up making with it was uh, industrial oils and uh, 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 what's the word I want? To uh, oh, I made a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> Already? Uh, yeah. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, it, into, into industrial fats, oils, as and such, and and talon for soap, and they, and also for fertilizer. And you can imagine what kind of smell came out of that. But it was all wooded around that area. Yeah, yeah. And uh, ironically, my brother-in-law was in a demolition building, and he uh, he's the one that tore that whole plant down and everything when it was time for it to go. And then it got turned into Letty Park. And uh, the ice rink was built on the other side right. of the tracks. The rendering plant, of course, was where the parking lot is. The other side of uh, uh, Letty Park that was uh, put in during the uh, uh, Gordon Paquette administration. Right. All right, let's go to North Beach. We got five minutes to go. We can talk about North Beach. Yeah. North Beach was, when I took over, it was awful. We had a terrible bathhouse. It was rickety. And we had sewage uh, going directly into the lake, into the swimming area. And, uh, you know, the day after a, a July 4th weekend, you see feces on the shoreline and, and all sorts of things on the, on the waterfront. And uh, the, so when the, the time came whereby the school department wanted some land to put a high school right near North Beach. So we made a deal. The Parks Department had a property where they administered the property where the uh, 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 athletic fields are. So what we did was we, we made a deal. School department, you put up a, a sewage treatment plant and we'll, we'll give you, we'll turn over the athletic fields and the rest of that area, which is park area, to the school department. Oh. So that's how we get the sewage out of the lake. But for a while, um, we'd get the water tested to make to do what we could about keeping it clean, which we didn't. but. Uh, I got together with the with the uh, city health officer. I said, you know, doctor, this is uh, July 4th weekend. Temperature is 85 degrees. We're not going to, if we test the water, we're not going to win. He said, well, I'll take the test down a little bit below, <laughs> more below the surface where, the, where, the, where, it's, where it's cooler. Because people were going to go to that beach anyway. I mean, when... Yeah. Uh, so, Whether they, when, it was polluted yeah, or not. not. And then the other, the other thing was... Uh, uh, just briefly, uh, uh, we extended the hit fly ash for the, uh, for the Moran plant, and that was flying over Lakeview Terrace, but we also had some residue, and we took trucks from that was, uh, ash, fly ash to extend North Beach. So we had a lot going there. Yeah. And I can tell you, there was a lot of uh, summer days that I spent down there, and for a couple of years, I was the uh, reserve lifeguard that would get called in if they were short a lifeguard. So uh, North Beach has a lot of fond memories. And up in the camping area, wasn't as big as the camping is now, but a lot of Canadians came and camped there. Right. And they were doing it with the tents and stuff, not, not the RVs like you see today. That was quite a family. Even Burlington people would go to there because... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was cheap. It was cheap. Yep. yep. It was accessible. I mean, you know... Sure. Uh, and they've done a great job with North Beach. North. Okay. Well, good. I think, folks, I hope you uh, uh, enjoyed our little rip, uh, discussion here about the Burlington Park System. We never got to the bike path, but one of Burlington's, some of Burlington's assets are, the, are our park system, our, our North Beach, and certainly the bike path and the waterfront. We've come a long way since those back in the days. So, uh, Al, 
Roser, thanks for sharing your experiences. Folks, thanks for looking, looking and sharing what we had to talk about. So we'll see you again sometime soon.